Time now for Inside Utah Politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go Inside Utah Politics, and we do begin this morning with Jason Perry. He's the director of the Hinkley Institute of Politics. Jason, as always, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. So glad to be with you, Glenn. Uh, let's dig into these midterms. Yeah. Uh, some interesting developments happening, and it seems to be earlier and earlier every cycle, but uh, challengers stepping up to face incumbents here in the state of Utah. W why do you suppose that is? Well, I mean, there are a bunch of reasons why someone decides to jump in the race. I'll, I'll start with the most altruistic. They feel like they can make a difference. Uh, I'm not really happy with what's happening with who is representing me. I think I might be able to mount a successful challenge. So there's the sort of like, I just feel like I can do something great. The second one is connected to that is, you know, every once in a while you get these elected officials and, you know, people are starting to take little chunks out of them, the press, you know, and the articles. People say, well, they might just be weak enough for me to get there. So that's what that's a part of it. And I, I guess the third real reason really is uh, some of these uh, elected officials are in, in spots where they just don't come open very often. So people will look at the clock and they say, well, it might be just my time. All right. They may be a little weak. I feel like I can do something. And really, it's time for me to make a, 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 an opportunity for myself right now because you never know when it will come around again. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the Senate race. Uh, Senator Mike Lee going for reelection. Yeah. Uh, Becky Edwards, former state representative and Ali Isom a former uh, staffer of Governor Herbert, both jumping into that race for the Republican nomination. You've done some polling. Yeah. Talk about what you're seeing from the numbers. Well, it's really hard to take down an incumbent under most circumstances, and that certainly seems to be the case here with Senator Mike Lee. So we have, we have been doing polling to see how people feel uh, about that race in the state of Utah. And it's interesting because we want to say, well, who's going to show up? And, you know, will Republicans show up to vote uh, in this next election cycle? And turns out most of them are. Something just like 62% of people in Utah said if they are Republicans, they will show up to vote. Uh, another huge chunk of uh, people say, I'm going to register as a Republican to show up and vote. And so we really have some kind of sense who's going to show up. And of those, about 54% of those Republicans say they're going to vote and they're going to vote for Mike Lee. So that's what's interesting. He just really has a really, really strong base with the more conservative elements of the Republican Party. And right now, those are the, the people who are probably going to show up. And right now we know who they're going to vote for. Uh, how many were undecided? In, well, in that yeah, ball. so there's a lot. It was about 33% when we do a head-to-head -head with Senator Lee and Ali Isom and Becky Edwards. You know, Becky was, was polling somewhere around 11%. Uh, Ali Isom was somewhere around 3%. And the big number right there for us all to watch over the next uh, couple of months is that 33% of Utahns are looking at this race saying, I haven't completely decided. That mm -hmm. is the group of voters that Ali and, and Becky particularly are going to be trying to get to. Okay, uh, let's dig into that a little a bit more because I, I've talked to a lot of people who look at this race and say if both of them get on the primary ballot that this would likely be an easy win for Senator Lee. Well, However, if they come together and decide that just one of them should move forward, could that have an impact on the race. That could be a really good and interesting strategy because what you're saying is right. You say I have these two more moderate Republicans here on the ballot. I mean, the truth is that they're mostly eating each other's votes. You know, people are coming in and they're the ones that are swapping. So if one of them really wants to uh, try to take a dent out of that lead that Senator Mike Lee has at this point, they're going to need to strategize in some way. Keep in mind, Glenn, both of them got signatures. Both of them are going to be on that ballot, at least right now is what they're saying. So we'll see if there's some sort of negotiation that happen behind the scenes right there because the reality is they're just uh, going to really impact each other, not mm -hmm. to mention the fact that there is an independent candidate who has uh, filed that will also take some of those votes. Yeah, uh, we'll get into that for sure, but let's uh, get into one other uh, point here. If it's just one of them on the ballot, do the numbers right now indicate that Senator Lee is still going to win that race? Uh, right, right now it does look like that. That is just the case. And it's because he really has shored up his base, the people that are going to show up and vote. It's right now. You never say never in politics. Sure. But he has to feel really, really good about where he is with the people who are going to show up. And that's the more conservative, conservative element of the Republican mm -hmm. Party. Those people are going to show up, and it makes it really hard to beat him at this point, even if you just consolidate the numbers down to two. Okay, let's, let's get into more of what you already brought up at this point, Evan McMullen. And he's running as an independent. Uh, obviously, we're not talking primary here, but in the general election, uh, you tend to see Senator Lee's numbers come down a little bit uh, when we're talking about the overall electorate in the state of Utah. So how could that potentially play out? Well, it's going to be so interesting to watch. Uh, uh, you and I follow politics so closely. And I'll just tell you, you're looking at history of independent candidates in the state of Utah. They typically get 
well, less than 5% of the vote. You have a few outliers. I mean, Evan McMullen being one of those, and in the presidential election, he got 21% of the vote in Utah. If you go back a little farther for the people who, are, who follow politics closely, Merrill Cook got 21% at one point. Ross Perot was 26% in the state of Utah. It's possible for a third-party candidate to you know, be sort of one of those outliers. It doesn't happen very often, and it's going to be very interesting to see if Evan McMullen is going to be able to make a name for himself, mm -hmm. enough for people to want to come and vote for him. Yeah, I'm not aware of an independent candidate in Utah winning a statewide race. So how much of an uphill battle is that? It's, it's an enormous battle. Uh, right now, for one of these uh, statewide races, it's hard anyway. Senator Mike Lee has, uh, has a, a pretty good level of support. And Evan Gamolin really has to make a name for himself. When he got 21% of the vote in Utah, pe some people knew who he was. Mostly they knew who he wasn't, which wasn't Hillary Clinton or... Or, or Donald Trump, and right. so he got a lot of support right there. But he's going to have to make his own name and really give people a reason to vote for him, not to vote against someone else. What might Democrats do in this situation? Do you expect them to still nominate uh, a candidate to be on the ballot as well? Or might Democrats look at this and say, hey, let's get behind the independent? Well, that's going to be so interesting. We saw one high-profile Democrat in uh, Ben McAdams, a former member of Congress. Mm -hmm. He did support uh, Evan McMullen recently, which is so interesting to see if that might be a trend that happens with the other Democrats in the state of Utah. We, we really will see. The Democrats are not going to leave it unchallenged. Uh, they, will, they usually find a, a candidate, a credible candidate, to fill in that role. We'll see uh, what they decide to do. But it's going to be interesting to see if, if Evan McMullen really tries to pull some Democrats to his side, and that's mm -hmm. really his strategy. Yeah, we will uh, wait and see. Uh, let's talk national outlook. We saw a poll from ABC come out just this week showing that President Biden's approval rating down to 41 percent, the lowest it's been. Uh, are Republicans poised for big wins in 2022? Well, right now, it sure looks like that's a possibility. Uh, the Republicans are really, they're looking at what happened like in Virginia, for example, to see what sort of messages really resonated with Republicans around the country, certainly there in Virginia. Were they able to get to those suburbs? Were they able to get people to vote on certain issues? Republicans are, are mounting a strategy based on what they saw there, the messaging that worked. And these are really take home messages that Republicans are going to try to get. They're things like education, for example, making sure parents Parents are involved in that education, the economy, some of those things which, which Glenn have been historically some of those things that the Democrats have owned. The Republicans are trying to really make a case for those things. And when it comes to that education component, particularly what's happened around the country this past year, uh, that's going to be a major issue in this next election. So what do you expect to see from Democrats over the next little bit as we head to those vital elections, midterm elections? Uh, the Democrats are going to have to try to reclaim what's happening right now, reclaim the message. And it's going to have to be a reframing, I think. Democrats, for a long time, were, were, were owning that message of education. So to the extent that they can be successful, it's reclaiming kind of those, those uh, street-level political issues that have been so good for Democrats for so long, and mostly also saying, we know the president is not doing very well in terms of his popularity, but we are independent. Those are not the coattails that we have to be riding. We're making a very local case. And I think that's what you're going to see around the country is a little less making trying to get the, the Joe Biden coattails if they're already at the time and really just uh, retail politics in mm -hmm. a very local kind of way. Yeah, and if you take a look at history, it typically goes that whoever's in the White House doesn't do so well in the next midterm election. The, the pendulum swings. You and I watch this all the time. Yeah. It just swings. That's what happens. <laughs> yep, no doubt about that. And, and numbers are... The margin right now isn't that uh, big anyway, especially in the Senate when you look at that. All right, Jason, always appreciate your analysis. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate your time. Glad to be with you.